Hi, welcome to Med Madness. We are seeing physiology basics in our channel now. This is one of nightmare topics for med students. Let's keep this topic simple. So you see ECG for the patients almost every day. It is very important to learn about our electrical potential across a cell membrane. So patients coming with hyperkalemia or hypokalemia, cardiac arrhythmia, hypo or hypernatremia and still lot of concepts based on this. Okay, let's dive into the session. First, let's get a big picture. So for example, you are getting a pin prick in your hands here. When you get a pin prick, there is some disturbance in the electrolytes here and the electrolyte starts moving into and out of a cell. And this signal is carried over to the other cells and through the nerves, your brain analyzes the activity. And your brain sends signal again to the effector organ and you do the action. Like this way, you do all the activities in your daily life. So the signal is transmitted from one cell to other. That is action potential. So this action potential is so important for our body to do your daily activities. Let us see about ions now. Ions are nothing but charged particles like potassium, sodium, chloride, calcium, and still lot of ions. These ions are present outside the cell as well as inside the cells. Since these are charged particles, this cannot cross through the lipid cell membrane. So you have channels in the membrane. There are two types of channels. One is the ungated channels. There is no gate here. And number two, gated channels. So a very good example for ungated channels are potassium ions. The potassium ions crosses these channels across the cell membrane from inside to out of a cell or out to inside the cells. For example, the patient is having hyperkalemia. Now, due to the concentration gradient, the potassium moves into the cell. Or if a patient is having hypokalemia, potassium starts moving out of a cell. Now, we have gated channels. The first type of gated channel is the voltage gated channel. The best example here is the sodium ions. The sodium ions is high outside the cell and this gate opens and closes in a specific voltage or say specific current. So if you give that specific voltage, this channel gets open and the sodium ions move from outside to inside the cell. The other type is a ligand gated channels. The ligand is like a key to the lock. So the ligands here may be a neurotransmitter like acetylcholine, norepinephrine, glycine or a hormones like insulin, glucagon or second messengers. We'll see it in biochemistry sessions. When the neurotransmitter, I have considered the acetylcholine here, binds to the channel, this channel gets opened and ion passes into or out of the cells. With this basic idea, we'll move further. So we have trillions of cells in our human body. Each and every cell, we have a special pump that is the sodium potassium pump. This pump is so important for the human body to produce two gradient. One is a concentration gradient and the other is the electrical gradient. How? Okay, now see, this pump pulls three sodium ions out of a cell and puts two potassium ion into the cell. By this way, there is high concentration of potassium ions inside the cell and high sodium ions outside the cell. This is a very important point. Take it down. How the electrical gradient is made? Look at the number of charges. It put three charges outside the cell and only two inside. So this produces electrical gradient. This is the first concept you want to learn in this lecture. Okay, before seeing the second concept, let me reinforce this concept once again in your mind. This is a very beautiful island, right? So here you have ocean that is salty water. So you have high sodium ions. Consider this like an extracellular fluid and this is a cell or intracellular fluid. So you have high potassium ions here. I hope you won't forget this point. Okay, now the second concept. There are two forces acting on each ion. So I have considered some ions inside and outside the cell. In each and every ions here, you have two forces. One is a concentration force and number two 
is the electrical force. Now I'm going to consider the potassium ions alone. Just imagine you have only the potassium ions inside the cell. Okay. Let's see another sketch now. Okay. So the potassium ions is very high inside the cell and very low outside the cell. You already seen this. So the potassium ions due to the concentration gradient, it starts moving outside the cell through the ungated channels. Okay. So what is the first force is a concentration force. So when the potassium leaves the cell, the cell is becoming more negative, more negative. How? Just imagine you have four positive ions and four negative ions inside the cell. What if three positive ions moves out of a cell? So your cell is becoming more and more negative. This produces an electrical gradient. So now these electrical charges start attracting the potassium ions. This electrical force want to keep the potassium ions inside and the concentration force want to put the potassium ions outside. So these concentration and electrical force are opposites. To reinforce this concept in your mind, I'll show you a picture. Funny picture, right? Okay. So the Superman and Supergirl are playing a rope game. So I want to consider the Superman as a concentration force and the Supergirl to be the electrical force. So they are opposite forces. Interesting, right? Okay. Now you can understand the equilibrium potential very easily. So the concentration force puts the potassium ions out of a cell. The electrical force pulls the potassium ions and wants to keep the potassium ions inside the cell. At some point of time, these two forces becomes equal and the potassium ions stops moving. Now, you check the voltage of a cell membrane when the potassium ion stops moving. For example, say it is minus 90 millivolt. And this is the equilibrium potential of the potassium ions. So the equilibrium potential of the potassium ions, you can say when the two forces becomes equal, the ion stops moving and you check the membrane potential here. It is found to be minus 90 millivolt. That is the equilibrium potential of a potassium ion and the membrane potential, the potential of a membrane. So you, anytime you check the membrane potential, how this membrane potential is made when the ions start moving into or out of a cell, it gives a membrane, a voltage, a current, a potential that is the membrane potential. Now, what is resting membrane potential? Resting membrane potential. So it makes sense, right? The cell is at rest. So when the cell is at rest, before that, what do you mean by cell is at rest? So there is no movement of ion across the cell membrane. This means the cell is at rest. So what is the potential you measure in the membrane when the cell is at rest or say when the ions are not moving? The resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolt for a typical cell. This resting membrane potential is different for some cells. We will discuss it later. Now, there are so many ions inside the cell as well as outside the cells, right? So you need to know which ion is a major contributor to this resting membrane potential. Now you need to understand this point. Listen carefully. So we have seen potassium ions when the channels are opened for potassium ions. This potassium ions always takes the membrane potential equivalent to its equilibrium potential, say minus 90 millivolt. So what you have understood from this? When an ion channel is opened, it always takes a membrane potential equal to its equilibrium potential. For example, take sodium. When the sodium voltage channel is opened, sodium ions start moving inside the cells. So the cell is becoming more positive. At the potential of about plus 60 millivolt, that is the equilibrium potential of sodium, the sodium ions stop moving which gives the membrane potential a plus 60 millivolt. So remember always if a channel is opened for that ion, listen to that words, 
only if it is opened only if it is opened the ion start moving inside or outside and bring some membrane potential equivalent to its equilibrium potential i hope this point is very clear for you now a question which is the major contributor to the lasting membrane potential for that we'll take some examples from other ions equilibrium potential so the sodium ions you have plus 60 millivolt potassium is minus 90 chloride is minus 75 calcium is plus 125 now can you guess the greatest contributor to the resting membrane potential which ions from here do you think it's chloride wrong it's not chloride why because the chloride channel is not opened all the time it is a gated channel so it should be your potassium because we have potassium ungated channels so what you've understood from this so you have your potassium ungated channels which is opened all the time so the potassium always leaves the cell due to the concentration gradient this takes the membrane potential near to its equivalent value minus 90 millivolt is a normal resting membrane potential is minus 90 or minus 70 it is minus 70 so there must be some other contribution to the resting membrane potential right remember two other small contribution from the sodium channels because we have very high sodium outside the cell it always try to move inside the cell so little contribution to this from the sodium ions and when sodium ions move in it takes the cell to a small positive value it affects the resting membrane potential so what is the other contributor your sodium potassium pump this pump puts three note that three sodium ions out and moves in only two potassium so this pump puts more positive charges outside than inside when more positive ions leave the cell the cell is becoming more negative this is the resting membrane potential i hope you are very clear about this concept now let us summarize now what is equilibrium potential so for any ion there are two forces acting on it one is a concentration force the other is electrical force they are opposite forces when these forces become equal it gives a membrane a potential that is called the equilibrium potential for example take potassium the equilibrium potential of potassium is minus 90 millivolt for sodium it is plus 60 millivolt what is membrane potential when the charges crosses across the cell membrane it gives the membrane a voltage or say current it is called membrane potential what is resting membrane potential when the cell is at rest that is no charges moves into or out of a cell you measure the voltage and you can find the resting membrane potential a major contributor to the resting membrane potential is your potassium and very minor from sodium but it is your potassium remember because we have ungated channels of potassium and the fourth is the action potential if you learn all these three concepts it is very easy to learn action potential we'll see it in next session if you have any doubts or topic session post in the comment section see you with more interesting topics thank you